time to start. All right. Okay, I think we live. Yes, indeed. Good evening, everybody. The Lord is good. And come on, on Palm. Hard to believe, but Palm Sunday is this Sunday. Hard to believe, in it? Palm Sunday this Sunday. And on next week, for those just tuning in, uh, we will not have class next week. I know a lot of people have services on a couple services on uh, the Friday. So I'm going to leave that open for those who want to attend their services. All right? So no class next okay. Friday. Plus, it's a very special person's birthday next Friday, too. Who was that? <laughs> My son's birthday next Friday. <laughs> He's, his birthday's on Good Friday. It fell on Good Friday this year. Yes, yeah, so. sir. Yep, indeed. So we'll get started with the word. God bless you, Facebook, if I haven't greeted you. Uh, we are joining along with our conference call and our Facebook family. We thank God for each one of you tonight. As we team, I got a, I have a lot of stuff to share with you tonight, and I'm not sure which way the spirit will take us, but uh, I hope you guys are ready to eat a good meal and dig down deep a little bit, get you thinking, get you thinking a little bit uh, tonight. So I'm not sure how far we'll go with it. But we're dealing with um, in Romans chapter sixteen, we left we left off at verse um, six, so we'll pick up on verse seven. We left off talking about the hardworking Mary. And we're dealing with these names, so I have some interesting things that have been dug up. Uh, some of these people, some of these people, um, some historic things about some of them that that the Bible doesn't tell us, but history and tradition does tell us about them. So we'll dig into some of them, dig into some of the names, and we'll see how far the Lord allowed us to. To go, because the first two are doozy, and I'll tell you why as we go forth tonight. Father, we're grateful tonight for your multitude of blessings upon our lives. We come, oh God, tonight loving you, loving your people, loving your word. Take any contaminations that may be in our hearts, minds, or thoughts that will contaminate this word by any bias, any, uh, any, uh, training that's false, that only your word will be spoken tonight, O oh God. Only your word shall be heard. So I commit myself to you and those who are here, and those who are not only here tonight, but those who will hear this message later on as a replay. So we thank you, Father, tonight for this social media platform. Now use it as a sanctuary that somebody might be encouraged through the word of God. We give your name praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So in the 16th chapter, winding down this book, of Romans, this chapter I believe most people just read past, not even read past, but because not even read past because there's so many strange names here, it'd be easy just to kind of skim through and say amen. But we're finding there's uh, treasure here. Every word of God is has a purpose. We might not always understand it, always grasp the truth of it, but every word, every chapter, every verse has uh, meaning, is meaningful. Um, necessary part of the word of God. So Paul, this great man of God, who God used so mightily to pen so much out of the scripture, is now ending this book that he wrote to a place he had never visited as of yet, uh, is Rome. He never met a lot of the people at Rome, but he knew a lot about them. Some of the people he must have met in passing because he speaks so personally about them, calling them beloved. They must have either sent them to Rome or in his journeys had met these people and those people moved to Rome. So um, whatever may happen, we know that Paul was a people person. Not only was he a preacher of the gospel, an apostle, a teacher, but he was a people person as uh, so all of us ought to be there in the Lord. We ought to be people that are concerned about the Lord. It's so easy sometimes to get so bogged down into what we do that we forget that uh, people come first. People always take priority. Of course, it's God first and then people, all right, above all other things. So Paul actually knew these pe some people by name and uh, some of the things they had been involved in. He names them. We talked about people like Phoebe and um, uh, the husband-wife team, Aquila and Priscilla. 
We talked about them. We talked about Mary. We talked about various ones. We're moving on down now to another uh, two people God's going to talk about in verse 7. In verse 7, Paul said, let me let me just read a few verses, then we'll come back to make comment on 7. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are note among the possible apostles, who also were in Christ before me, and Amphi um, Ampelus, my beloved, in the Lord, salute Urbani, um, our helper in Christ, and uh, Sactes, my beloved, salute Apelles, approved in Christ, salute them that are of Aristopolis, of the Aristopolis' household. All right, um, let me read one more. Salute Herodian, my kinsmen, greet them that are the household of Narcissus, of which are in the Lord. Salute Tramphina and Tramphosia, who labor in the Lord. Salute the beloved Persis, which labored much in the Lord. So hopefully we'll get that far <laughs> to see the night, all right? Uh, we get that far tonight, all right? Um, so we talk about uh, uh, people that were uh, background of Paul's ministry. They, Paul did a lot of ministering, but there was a lot of other workers that were working in the Lord that may not have had, had the platform or the visibility of a Peter or a Paul, but yet are very important. And I think that's uh, important for us to note that uh, everyone plays a part. Everyone is necessary. Everyone is important. And God chooses people from all walks of life. All walks of life. Um, we uh, mentioned on last week uh, some of the people that are named here. You have people that are as low as slaves and as high as people who are working in the imperial household were affected by the gospel, which was a good news. And we'll see as we move on some of these people. The first two that we'll talk about tonight, um, in verse 7, Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. Paul tells us a lot about these this um, uh, couple here. And this couple, this is either, now look, this is what makes this verse a little tricky because this is either two men or a husband and wife. It could be brothers, but Paul linked them together like he did with Priscilla and Aquila. So we know that they're linked together. All right? So, um... Uh, and the thing about this, um, we know that Andronicus is a male, but Junia is can be a male or female name. And uh, if and Junia is a female name, these would have to be brothers. But if Junia is a female, a husband and wife. All right. So I'm going to take it as a husband and wife team, just like Aquila and Priscilla. And it could be again, it could be either way. Because the name isn't feminine. We know that some guys have feminine names. Even in our day. I know a Carol. I know a Aggie. <laughs> I know a Tremaine. So guys' names can also go back way. So we're going to take it as a husband and wife team. But he named, he says, they are my kinsmen. So these were Jews. And possibly uh, because there were other Jews in this list that Paul didn't say, where his kinsmen, they could have been in some relation to Paul. We know Paul had a nephew that heard the scheme in the book of Acts. We know Paul had a sister. We know some things about Paul's relatives. But maybe these are some believers, uh, which would have been very exciting for Paul to have believers in his family. And um, he calls them his kinsmen. He also says they're my fellow prisoners. So at some point in time, they had shared prison cells with Paul. They had somehow some imprisonment for the cause of Christ, which would have brought them even closer together as people. We don't have the rec the, the record of this in the book of Acts uh, of um, of uh, Adronicus and Junia, but we know they were around because Paul said so. Uh, it also says here who of a note who are of note, or this word note means had marked among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. And this is the. Um, Interesting fact here I want to bring out tonight. 
is that uh, this could go two ways also. Got your thinking caps on tonight? I see you shaking your heads out there. All right. Note among the apostles could mean the apostles knew of them or could mean that they are apostles, which would bring something in very interesting here. The female will be called an apostle. All right. Very interesting, huh? So um, what I want to point out, I guess I won't stay on this point long, is that um, either way it works. Because um, if they were note among the apostles, in other words, the apostles knew them by their Christian walk. The apostles knew of them. That would flow really, really well with this because Paul says they were in Christ before him. That means that this couple were saved before Paul got saved, which means they had observed Paul when he was uh, not in Christ and destroying Christians. Also means that they could have been amongst those who were in a Jerusalem among the first ones to receive the gospel uh, early in the book of Acts. They were Christians before Paul. So the apostles would have known of them. Now, if we take this, that they were among the apostles, I want us to get a, another idea. How many have heard, and I know I can't see hands, I can't see hands anywhere um, in the um, in our live feed, but um, you can put it in your notes and say, that's me. How many, of us have, how many of us have heard all our lives there are only 12 apostles? Yeah. Only 12 apostles. Then I want you to think real good, because uh, Judas was replaced, right, by Matthias. And then Paul came along. That's 13. <laughs> right? And uh, let me just take you to some, this just to broaden your thoughts. I want to kind of broaden our thoughts a minute and come back and make some observations. Um, I want to show you, look in um, the book of Acts. Acts 14, 14. I'm not making this up. I'm just reading scripture. All right. Acts 14, 14. Uh, which when the apostles. Everybody with me? Which when the apostles. Barnabas and Paul. Heard of, they rent their clothes and ran among the people. So here the scripture calls Barnabas an apostle. Okay. Y'all still with me? That's like 14. <laughs> now go with me to Galatians. I'm not going to take, I have other verses. I won't take you to all these verses. But I have other verses to show you. Go to Galatians. We'll settle down in a minute. I want to make some. I want to make some points here. Galatians one and nineteen. But other other apostles saw I none save James the Lord's brother. That's fifteen. <laughs> James the Lord's brother. Now, James is interesting. You know why James is so interesting? James is interesting because James didn't believe in the Lord while he was in flesh. James got saved sometime between Christ's resurrection and the day of Pentecost. James was in the upper room. All right? So he became a believer. All right? So let's go to one, one more verse, and then I promise we'll go back to our verse for the night. Let's look in first... Um, Oh, let's look at first. This is a good one. Let's look at first Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15. And I'm going to read a little bit. I want y'all to think. Okay. As I'm reading, I'm going to start at verse five and read down. Uh, let me start at verse four. This is Paul giving the gospel. Hmm. Let me go back to verse 3. Okay. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that uh, also which I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, 
and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. Amen. Death, burial, resurrection. And that he was seen of Cephas. That's Peter. Then of the twelve. That's all the apostles, right? And after that, he was seen above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain until this present, but some have fallen asleep. So when Paul was writing this, some of those 500 had actually saw Jesus was still alive, all right? He goes on to say, and after that, he was seen of James, that's the Lord's brother, and of all the apostles. Did y'all get that? Earlier said he had been seen of the apostles. In verse 5, Cephas, then of the then of the 12. But here it says, in verse 7, then he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. So there are some other apostles beside the 12. Did y'all read? Y'all hear what I'm saying to you tonight? I wish I could see all y'all faces. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, I hope you follow me. I'm going back now. I'm going to make some points. A couple points. I'm going back now to, um, I'm not teaching, I'm not teaching heresy. Because <laughs> I gave you, what the, I, I, all it was, re I read the scripture, right? The scripture says what? There was more apostles. All right, but there was a distinction made between the 12 and the apostles. There's no other apostles that are on the level of the 12. All right? That's the ones that Christ's hand chose. And then he chose Paul later on. All right? There's nobody on that level to give revelation and so forth. James did give revelation. James, the brother of the Lord, because he wrote the book, the book of James. All right? So he was a revelator also. He also uh, met the requirement because he's seen the Lord resurrected. All right? All right. So let's look at this word apostle. We tend to see the, to get one word and apply it all the same way every time it's written. I should have showed you the other passage of scripture. But this word apostle is translated in some places as simply as messenger. Apostle means one sent out with orders. All right. So there were apostles of Christ. There was a 12 sent out. But there were also apostles of the churches. Those who were sent out. From the churches to do work, such as Barnabas and Paul were sent out. They were called apostles. They were sent forth with orders by the church of uh, Antioch, sent them forth to do missionary work. So what we can say, when I must, when I, let me bring it all together. What I'm trying to say to you, if this was a female and her husband called an apostle, doesn't mean she held the office of the apostle. It meant she was more like a missionary, just like Ananias, and not, I keep saying Ananias and Fire. Aquila and Priscilla. Aquila and Priscilla did missionary type work also. All right. That's what I'm trying to say to you. Everybody follow me? Mm -hmm. I want to make sure we're clear here. I just want to broaden our thoughts because there's some people just say there's only 12 apostles. And uh, in me, before I really studied this out some time ago, I would have told you there was only 12 apostles, no more. But then when the scripture keeps calling other people apostles, then I know there are more, but there's none that takes the place of the 12. Y'all follow that? Mm -hmm. Every time you see the word apostle, doesn't mean it's the 12. Other people were also messengers. Also, this um, I had another verse of scripture. Let me see if I, I can call it out to you just to jot down. In Philippians 2.25, jot that down. It's a man by the name of Epaphroditus. He was called the messenger of the church. That word messenger is the same word that's used for apostle. All right? So he was apostle of the church, sent out by the church to do work. I hope you guys are following me. All right? Mike, come here a second. I want you to look at this. Come around this way. Um, so uh, I wanted to go back now. So uh, Andronicus and Junia are interesting because of that fact. So either way you slice it, they were fellow prisoners of the Lord. They were note among the apostles, and they were also which come around this way. They were also Christians um, before Paul was. All right. We move down a little bit further and look at um, Ampelus. 
Ampolis, my beloved in the Lord. Ampolis, my beloved in the Lord. Now, this name is interesting because the Bible called him beloved meant that Paul must have known him some must have known him somehow. It keeps popping up. It um Paul must have known him somehow personally. His name means large or extensive. Um interesting thing about his name is that this is a slave name. This was a name that was a uh, marked upon no a well known slave name. All right. And um, yet he was beloved in the Lord. A well-known slave name. And in the, uh, I found something very interesting about him. You won't find this in scripture, but tradition and also in the catacombs. Now, it's not definitely known to be him in the catacombs of Rome. In the catacombs of, of Rome were where the churches would do, the churches would bury their people underground. And I understand you can still visit these things today. And so there's burial grounds underneath the ground, under the churches. And there's a huge decorated tombstone in the catacombs, the early catacombs, with the name of Apollos on there. All right? And this signified that amongst all the other people buried, this signified that although he was a slave, he was somebody in rank in the church. Well, what am I trying to say to you? In Christ, it doesn't matter whether you're a slave, bond free, you're the boss, you're a shot caller, it doesn't matter who you are. When it comes to Christ, we're all one in Christ. And that the thing about the body of Christ was this. Although Ampelus was a slave, he was possibly an elder or pastor, someone very important in the church, which could have mean his very master could have been taught by him in the house of God. Isn't it interesting? So what am I trying to say to you? God has all kinds of people. And how we're going to see a lot about uh, these names that we look at tonight. We're going to see a lot about households that were affected by the gospel. And as I go through, I'll tell you, but I'm, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. But if a household, when the Bible speaks of a household, it could mean uh, mother, father, it could mean mother, father, so forth, but also could mean the slaves that were there. And some of the people in this list were of households of royalty. And when they passed away, their slaves will be taken to the imperial up into the emperor. They would become the emperors because they were connected that way, which means those same slaves that belonged to a believer would have gone all the way to the palace and affected those people in the palace. To let you see how God works. God has people. Maybe Paul couldn't get in the palace, but God would use the slaves to preach the gospel and influence those people in the palace. Isn't that wonderful how God works? So sometimes we think I'm too small. I'm a, a custodian. I'm a, a, a food service person. I'm a, a this or the that. And, and there's nothing. But right where you are is a missionary field. God needs people everywhere. I've been I've been working FedEx for all these years, and I've met all kind of people, from the doctors, professors, down to the custodians. And guess what? God's got people on every level. Amen. And uh, the only title you shall take to heaven will be that of a servant of God or child of God. No matter how many uh, uh, degrees you get on this side, God has people everywhere. And I found that out. God has people every places you wouldn't even think people of God were. They were there, up to the um, all the way up to the president's office. There were people working at, and there was a man there who was administrator, retired now, but he was always in the administrative office, and a servant of God and a man of God, and a preacher, right there, sitting next to all the dignitaries of the university. So God's got people everywhere. Amen. He since has retired about 10 years ago now in uh, doing ministry. So I thank God for meeting people of all levels. So I wanted to let you see this, that uh, we can read past these names and do a little study and find out that um, 
this man was significant. We know, he, and also another fact is this: noblemen at this time, noblemen had of uh, 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 their time would have had three names. Slaves would only have one name. And that's what's on this big tombstone, one name, Ampelus. So he was a man of significance in the church, although he might not look like much to other people outside. Guess what? In God's house, he was a leader and a servant of God. So I want you to know God can use anybody. It doesn't matter what state you're in, age-wise. It doesn't matter. I keep telling y'all, it doesn't matter. God still got work for you. If you're still breathing, God got work for you. Amen. And my um my very my very passion is this. My concern is this that I do what I do for him and do it well. Be effective. Uh spending the time and spending the time in um God's word, spending time in uh prayer, spending time uh when people uh don't even realize it, that I know it may not seem like much, but uh, a lot of study goes into doing a lesson like this. It may not seem like I'm together, but <laughs> I study a lot to be able to present. Because I want not, not to impress anybody, but I want to be right when I speak. I want to be right. I want to be well studied when I speak. And guess what? In this, the, the much I've told you so far, uh, I realize that I'm still, none of us know it all. Amen. That the Bible says we know in part, we prophesy in part. So no matter how educated or well-studied you are, none of us know it all on this side. There's always something more to learn and to know, but it keeps us humble. It keeps us not being proud. It keeps us humble to know that, yes, I've learned something. And um, that one, I took it to, I took it to Romans, to uh, 1 Corinthians 15. I just saw that today. I was just reading through, uh, thinking about Paul's testimony and thinking about James. And then I saw the other apostles. He already said he saw the apostles. So I just saw that today and read it. Many times as I wrote that, read that passage of scripture, it wasn't brought to me until this evening that he actually spells it out. There were other apostles. None like the 12, but there were other apostles. All right. And there's some people will tell you that the gift of apostleship is no longer in existence. And I believe there's no apostles like the 12, but God is still sending all it means is a messenger sent forth with orders. God is still sending people forth uh, with orders. All right. So um, that's enough for that uh, slave situation. The next name we run into. Um, Amplis, beloved of the Lord. Uh, Urbane. He's a helper in verse 9. 16 and 9. He's a helper in Christ. A helper in Christ. So he was part of the team how many of you know we, we're on the same team we have to learn how to look at each other as the same team and just because my team doesn't worship where your team is worshiping doesn't mean we're not part of the team well, your team worships differently than my team doesn't mean that you know you're not part of it's all one team so we start dividing ourselves by labels and denominations and churches then we defeat the oneness that Christ died for, he died so we might blend together as one. Yes, we all are different. Now, I talked about that last week. We're different, but we should blend together, not clash. Amen. So uh, there are thousands of preachers, but nobody should be just alike. Thousands of teachers, thousands of uh, teachers and uh, whatever gift you may have, speaking gifts, prophecy gifts, serving gifts, uh, administrative gifts. But everybody has their own way of doing it. And what God does is takes that gifted person and places them as a gift in the church to operate so the church may grow. But let me, um, while I'm on this, I, I promise you I wasn't going to leave, but let me just take it to another verse. I think if I can find it real quick. Uh, where is it? Uh, maybe I have to come back to it. It's in Ephesians. The Holy Spirit helped me find it because I... It slips in my mind exactly where it is. Uh, maybe I'll come back to it another time. It's in Ephesians, I think it's 3.
Um, okay, look at 3.16. Yes. 3.16. Ephesians 3.16. All right. Uh, from the from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted. Talking about the body of Christ. The whole body. That's the members, you and I. Fitly joined together and compacted. How? That which uh, that which every joint supplies. So everybody supplies something. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Everybody supplies something according to the factual working of the measure of every part making the increase of the body until the edifying itself in love. So what I bring over here for let you see that the, 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 the scripture, Paul describes the church as a body, just like your physical body has uh, many members, fingers and toes and eyes and ears. All the things describes the body as having many members, but it's not many. It's not different uh, 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 parts that function away from the others, but all members function together with each other. You don't think your little toe matters, you snub it. You hit it against something. And what happens? The whole body responds. The mouth responds. The hands respond. The legs respond. Why? Because it's all part of one living organism. But every joint, I took you to this verse to let you know that every joint supplies. The body grows. We grow together. I was uh, just finishing... Um, I'm going back over here to um, Romans. Just finishing up uh, doing finals for the class I teach at Baltimore School of the Bible. And at the end of the class, the last class, I can honestly say that we had all grown together. Not only had the students grown, I see them developing and minds being changed, our hearts being uh, lifted, getting new views of Scripture. But through these two, we stayed together two semesters. And through all this time, I could see we all had grown. I had grown. Although I teach the same class year after year, every time I go back to it, I get more and I grow. So we grew together. They sharpened me and I sharpened them. That's what the body of Christ is about. It's about us growing together. I listen to their ideas and their thoughts, and I learn from what they, their perspective of things. They listen to me. And they and hopefully they they got something out of the class. I think they did learn something out of the class. But what I'm trying to tell you that everybody's important. Everybody matters. Can y'all say that? Everybody. If you're on Facebook, type it out. Everybody matters. How about this? Everybody in the body matters. You're never too small. You're never there are no little people. There are no insignificant people in the body of Christ. We have to view each other. Can you imagine what the body of Christ would be like if we would view each other in that kind of honor? I gave you the illustration some time ago, and I think it's a very I heard from somebody. It was a good illustration. What if Mary, the mother of Jesus, was coming to your house today, pregnant with Jesus? I'm just, just you know, imagine this. Imagine if Mary, the mother of Jesus, came to your house, and you knew Christ was in her. How would you treat Mary? You know, Tommy, what, what, you would be so polite. You would try to, you would be so respectful because you know she was carrying the Savior, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? You would be like, uh, you know, um, uh, who was it? Um, Elizabeth. She's Elizabeth spoke, and, and John the Baptist leaped. <laughs> Anna came to see, and, and and what was it? Simeon all came to see this king that was born in Mary. You know, so we gotta understand. But what I'm trying to say to you today is that. If we would pay her that respect, what about people who have Christ in them? That's you and I. We would learn to look at each other as carriers of the Savior. How much more we respect each other. And recognize when we do stuff to each other, we do it unto the Lord, whether good or bad. So we talk about each other, we talk about Jesus. We criticize each other. We criticize Jesus. What respect we'd have for each other, we realize 
that person. We may not see eye to eye with everything. We might not agree with everything that each other does or says, but we are supposed to still respect the fact that is a child of God. And I know it's hard. I know it's tight, but it's right. I know I had to remind myself because I'm, some folk that name the name of Christ do not act like they know Christ. And I want to respond like I don't know Christ because they act like they don't know Christ. But what good is that going to do for me to act out? Nothing at all. Amen. So let's stop slapping each other. That was a little joke, y'all. <laughs> and let's start loving one another. All right. All right. Irvine, this, his name Irvine. Um, I got to Irvine, right? Irvine is uh, a Latin term, Ubonus. And guess what uh, word is developed from that? Urban or city. So he very well could have been a city boy. How many city boys has God saved? I'm one of them city boys God saved. Amen. <laughs> I'm one of the ones that grew up in the hood. They call it the hood. My kids, th my kids thought they knew what the hood was, but uh, my, but their mother and I, we grew up in the hood. Showing sure off hood, she was on the east side, and I was in northwest Baltimore. And um, God still kept us and saved us. I know I got some hood people out there right now. Grew up in the hood. Some of y'all still might be in the hood. But sorry, right. God's got some saved people in the hood. Jesus came up in the hood. Y'all know Jesus came up in the hood? Jesus was in this place um, where he came from. Um, what was it called? Um, any good thing come out of, um, what was it? Nazareth. That was the ghetto of the area. Nothing good comes out of that. But the Savior came out of that. Amen. God has a way of shining a bright light in the darkest places. My, my, my. I know we like to isolate ourselves, but God wants to not us be isolated. He wants us to get involved because every dark place needs a bright light. Amen. We like to huddle. We like to get in holy huddles. And we need holy huddles to encourage each other. But we got to come out the holy huddle and let the light shine. Before minutes, they may see our good works and glorify the Father who's in heaven. Amen. And that's my desire to be your desire to want our light to shine. So this is one of the city boys named Urban. And we know that um, his name also means courteous uh, in manners and polite. Uh, but this guy was a helper, which means he was a team worker. I, um, you know, some people always have to be in charge. To participate. But it takes uh, a person who's working for God to get behind someone and follow their lead and work for God when nobody's looking. Work for God when nobody sees that you you don't work for God. Working in the background, but you're working for God. We're going to be really surprised when we get to heaven. And see those people we think should be up front, be, be, be behind somewhere. And see the people we looked overlooked up front. <laughs> We're going to be surprised, I think, because we, we judge after the flesh, but God looks at the heart. And everything that shines ain't from God. Amen? And we're going to be surprised when we see the things that are happening. So um, all I can tell you tonight is be sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Amen? Be sure, be sure. Ain't no harm in saying, Jesus, I just want to make sure you heard my cry. <laughs> I just want to make sure you saved me. I'm trusting you with my life. I'm trusting you with my everything. I'm tr I don't trust me because I'm shaky. <laughs> I trust you because you're solid. I trust you with my salvation. I trust that you saved me. I trust you died for me. It's okay to make those affirmations. Some people get offended. Are you saved? You ought not get a, you ought not get offended. Somebody ask you if you're saved. They say, praise the Lord. Yeah, thank God. I am saved. I'm trusting Christ for my salvation. Amen. Amen. It's okay. I mean, it's okay to reaffirm yourself. Paul said, make sure you're calling. Make sure. It's okay to be sure. I remember many times asking the Lord, you ever got, felt like you got saved all over again? God did such a work in your heart. You thought you had to ask for salvation. I've had God take me to a level where I thought, the stuff I used to do wasn't even save stuff. <laughs> the 
the stuff I used to do. God has taken me to another level to where I can look back to realize the stuff I was doing, I wasn't even act like a saved person compared to the level that he had taken me on. Although I was saved, I wasn't acting like it. I didn't have the mentality. Sometimes it's not even an action. Sometimes it's a heart attitude. It's a, a heart attitude that you can carry and not even realize you carry. That's why David said, create me a clean heart. He knew that what he had couldn't even work with. You can't even work with it. It's so bad you can't work with it. Uh, uh, Jeremiah said the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Only the Lord can know it. And every now and then that stuff that's deep down will come out. You ever said something you thought you'd never say? You ever did something you thought you'd never do? And got frustrated with yourself because you shouldn't have acted that way? I remember <laughs> one of my dear friends, I would never I would never say her name. I remember her telling me her testimony about somebody stopped her and uh, tried to treat her, you know, uh, one a person of the other persuasion tried to treat her as if she was, you know, less than a person. And she said when she got done, she had cussed that man up, down, and, <laughs> and all over the place. And she put her hand over her mouth. She didn't realize she had that much in her. You don't know what's in you until it's third. You don't know what it is. Until you test it, you don't know. You don't know. We don't know until we test it. I used to always use the illustration of going to um, one of these countries. That got you got to get out of USA. Go to a place that's got real clear water. One of those overseas water plates. You go, you go to um, the Bahamas or somewhere that's got clear water and look down and see straight down. And don't matter how clear that water is, if you get a stick, you stir it up. Guess what happened? That's some dirt on the bottom somewhere, isn't it? It just settled on the bottom. So we gotta understand that uh, we may look good. But all it takes is that incident to stir us. Amen. I know I got some real people out there to stir up, and that stuff will come out. That stuff will come and stuff you thought, what? You been looking at your mouth saying, all that coming out of me? Yeah, all that coming out of you. You know why? Because it's from the buns to the heart, the mouth speaks. And every time that stuff jumps out of me, I say, Lord, please have mercy on me. I do not want to be this way. Please create me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in me. Please. Forgive me for my, we have to do this. You know, we do this because God, I want to be clean inside. Amen. People are concerned about how you look outside and that's, that's fine. You know, put on the, whatever you got to put on to make yourself look as best you can, but it's about the inside. What's, what's going on inside? You can have all the outside stuff all put together. Remember when I was young, I think I told the illustration before I, when I was young, I used to travel with a guy who, who, uh, uh, directed a lot of choirs. And I hope he's not listening. <laughs> There's a lot of y'all. I think I was, I probably was a teenager, at least early 20s. But um, he directed a lot of choirs, and they had a wonderful musician, and the choirs would have all the robes and all the colors syncopated. They would start swaying all together, back and forth, swaying, and open their mouths and couldn't even sing. <laughs> They had everything but what they needed. You can have all the outside stuff and look the part, and not be the part. And I was, I came from Cornerstone. We had, we had came up with some good singing, y'all. So I knew what a singing choir was about. We came up, we had, a, we had choirs back in the day. You could point to anybody, they, they would tear the church up. That's the kind of singing I was used to. So, um, you know, so uh, when I was go travel with him, I'd be like. Choir. I don't know what that is. So you can look the part and not really be the part. People are concerned about colors and shoes and ties and collars and hats and all that stuff. That's fine and dandy, but make sure the inside is straight. Put some effort on the inside. Amen. Amen. Put some effort on do you love people? Amen. Put some effort on humility. Put some effort in prayer. Put some effort in serving people and not being served. Lord, Lord, Lord. Put some effort into that. How you treat people. How you, treat people. How you speak to people. I just, I just, I've seen so much in my Christian life. I've seen people being mistreated in the house of God. I've seen people just being mistreated. 
and 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 backbite and, and stabbed and all of the things. And th- I've seen. Well, I, I don't want to talk too much, but you know, I'm, I'm just speaking from what I've seen, y'all. <laughs> and yeah. it's bad when you're. Can I just say this to you? It's bad when you're treated worse in the church than you are on the street. The house of God should be a place of love, a place of compassion. But only God can do that for a heart. So don't worry about looking apart, be the part. Amen. Be the part and God will take care of the looks. Amen. Be the part, be the mind. I ask God and I pray and I still pray. I said, God, I'm not worried about titles. I just want to be the person. I just want to be the person. Make me the person. All the other stuff will fall in place. Amen. He's still working on me. Still working on all of us. Amen. So um, we left off with uh, Urbanus. And uh, the next one name is kind of strange all these names are strange i'm giving you guys some names for some of you may be having some grandchildren the children you want to pick names for these are bible names all right all right <laughs> and another one in the same verse called his name is uh stackies stackies my beloved s-t-a-c-h-y-s and uh Stackies is kind of strange uh, because uh, he's called beloved. All right. Paul didn't have any problem with telling another man that he loved him and that he was beloved. Uh, the Lord told Jesus at his baptism and transfiguration, this is my what? Beloved son. And we are beloved because we're in Christ Jesus. All right. But this man Stacky. His name means this, y'all. I don't know why. His why his parents called him this, but his name means the ear of corn. So I don't know if he ate a lot of corn or an ear of corn. <laughs> That's what his name means. So I guess you could call him Cobb. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. We don't know why, but I'm telling you what his name means. Maybe his parents raised corn, or I don't know what it was, but that's what his name means. But we do know. It was un, it's a very uncommon Greek name. He was a Greek, so he was not a Jew, and that he was one who was loved. You got a jacked up name, but you still love. Amen. <laughs> How many of you know you got some stuff jacked up about you, but you still love? Yeah. Amen. I got some stuff jacked up about me, y'all. I got a whole lot of jacked up stuff about me, but I know I'm still loved. And that's what carries us through. Amen. Amen. None of us got it all together. There's some things about you. I could, I bet all of us have something about our physical appearance that we don't like. Something about uh, our shape or whatever. I used to always come up and get teased about my head, you know, when I was a little boy, I teased about my head shape and all that stuff. But I've come to love my head shape because God was very, he was very uh, um, fearf- I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. He made me in a way that not many people are made. <laughs> And there's a story behind my head. People don't know this. My family's heard it before. There's a story behind this head. When I was a when I was a kid, when I was a baby, my um soft spot, you know, every kid has a soft spot so your skull can grow. My soft spot had hardened when I was a kid. And some of y'all heard it before, but it's a, it's, a, it's a testimony. The doctors told my mother that my head would not grow. And that I would be retarded. You can't say retarded now. Uh, what is it, special need? What is it called? Mm-hmm. Special needs or whatever. I'll be a, a child. You can't say retarded when you got to say special needs. But back then, the doctor said I'd be retarded. All right, I'm talking about, you know, uh, 60 years ago. <laughs> and they told my mother that I needed to have surgery in order to not be a special needs child. But mother said, let him be special needs, you're not gonna cut him. And lo and behold, look at this head. 
The doctors was totally wrong. They was wrong about the head size. I can't say much about special needs. Because when we talk to my family, they say, you still special needs. Then he said, mm-hmm. But anyway, all these things about us are unique. It may be jacked up, but you know what we still love by God. Amen. And although other folk don't like it, guess what? God says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Give God praise. Amen. Whether they call you ugly, cute, pretty, short, fat, whatever they call you, that's all right. I'm God's fat, bald head man. <laughs> and my dad used to tell me this, y'all. He used to tell me this. When people called me fat, he said, to tell them this, that you can do something about their fat, but they can't do nothing about their ugly. <laughs> I'm not encouraging that, y'all, but it, but it was funny, wasn't it? I'm not encouraging that, but that's what he told me. The kids, the kids would say fat, so fat, call me names, all that kind of stuff. But you know what? I thank God for every fat year he gave me. I'm still here. Amen. 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 But anyway, I got on that talking about this man's name was jacked up, but he still loved. Amen. Maybe things about you don't like, but you got to recognize it's about God loving you and accepting the love of God. When you receive the love of God, you can love other people. I cannot, oh yeah, my time is winding up. I cannot love you right until I love God right. And people don't understand that. I can't even love me right until I love God right. Because when I love God, he's going to tell me what he's making of my life. And therefore, I don't walk around in this tight, evil ball frustrated about life and mad about everything because I know God loves me and I can accept me with all. He accepts me with all my faults. I can accept me and watch God change me. So the more I love God, the more I learn to love me and love other people. Amen. Amen. When you don't have that love for God, you are so, we are so limited. When, when you don't have Christ in your life, you are so limited. The love is always self-centered. What can you do for me and how can you serve me? But Jesus, we're going to talk about it next Sunday. Jesus, he's a different kind of king. We're going to talk about that Sunday. He's a different kind of king, y'all. Mm, mm, mm. He came to serve, not to be served. And I pray tonight that he make a different kind of people. That he would let the revival start in me, right? Y'all say, let the revival start in me. Yes, yes. I want to be a different kind of person. Different kind of Christian. One that is about serving others, not being served. So we thank God tonight for this time we've had together. We pick it up. So we talked about, we got down the cob, right? We'll move on from, and we'll move from corner to cob to verse 10. We, we got the next. Next week we're not having class, so we got the next. So y'all learn y'all stay saved, all right? Stay saved. You got a week with y'all can have class. So make sure you stay saved. That was a joke, y'all. <laughs> you said do the same. <laughs> Don't lose nothing. Don't lose nothing between <laughs> Don't lose nothing between the times, all right? Anyway, y'all, we gotta close out. <laughs> Thank God tonight for his uh, many blessings upon us, our lives again. Next week, no class, but good Friday next week. Make sure you reflect upon um, the Savior as we come upon these days that are set apart, set apart, uh, um, set aside to honor him right in Jerusalem this week, his, cru his death on Friday and his resurrection on Sunday. Um, I love the focus on Christ during these holidays, but I don't need them to, to appreciate him because I appreciate him every day. Some people need these days. Some people really need these days to shout, he got up, he got up, he got up. No, I, I appreciate him every day. Amen. So for those who need that special day, God bless you. For those who serve him and love him every day, God bless you. Amen. Uh, so uh, come and be with us on Sunday morning, 9 o'clock, for 
our Sunday school lesson. And then we're going to have our service at 11 on Sunday morning. And we're just going to have a blessed week. Amen. Amen. So God bless you. Amen. May his heaven's richest Amen. blessings be upon you and yours. Father, we thank you right now for this time that you allowed us to come together. We thank you for your people. We thank you for this lesson. We're able to not only learn, but we're able to laugh. Able to laugh and to learn together. We're just so grateful, God, tonight for you being with us during this time. And let this word sink deep in someone's heart that somebody might be encouraged and that somebody might be saved. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you, my family. We love from my house to yours. We love you. Have a blessed um, Palm Sunday and Easter celebration. God bless you. Kingdom Praise Ministry is signing out.